Right, closing remarks. I've got about, oh yes, we'll get there. I might have one or two questions. Frequent reason for rejecting a manuscript is that the results are not thought to be sufficiently novel or substantial enough, or of only local interest only. We measured it in Serbia. Yeah. They don't grow anywhere else in the world. They're Serbian endemic species. They're special. But you've got to make it internationally relevant. Uh, just repeating somebody else's work with different um, populations or methods. Ask yourself, will your manuscript increase the journal's impact factor? That is your target. If the referees say your manuscript is too long, then you can often reduce the length of it by combining the results and the discussion into one section. So it means that you don't repeat yourself anywhere. So that sometimes helps, reducing the length. Your English needs to be sufficiently good for it to be unambiguous or clear to the reviewers what it is that you're trying to say. Referees will not bother to struggle reading very bad English. I do know of examples of Serbian scientists who've contacted me to tidy up their English, where the, uh, the editor has accepted their paper. It's got through the refereeing process. The quality of the science and the quality of what they've presented is generally good, but they have asked for the English to be tidied up because it's not up to the journal standards. So that will sometimes happen. Do not assume that the referees are always right. Referees, they're not special people. Special people who know all of the answers. They're people like us. They're people who have a lot of other jobs to do, in most cases, and they may not necessarily have a lot of time to spend reading your manuscript word by word. So if they... Uh, they miss out information that you have given and they say that there's a problem with your manuscript if you believe that they are wrong do not be afraid to tell the referee to tell the editor that the referee was mistaken in this interpretation because and then give the reason even if you can't see a reason why, accept any changes of words or style required by a referee. Hey, that's happened to me on occasions. Hey, although they changed my English and I can't see a problem in my English. If they want to have it that way, as long as I don't object, then I'll change it. I don't mind. No problem. A couple of slides on the review process. This is what happens with the journal, journal of Experimental Botany. The editor has an initial look through the manuscript, identifies the sub-editor for that area of the science, and it goes to the sub-editor, who will then identify if it's suitable to be sent out to the referees. The journal will have an extremely large database of names of scientists with different areas of expertise. And typically it will uh, try to get the, the reviews back from two referees. Very often, I was told on one occasion that they often have to contact five scientists to get two to accept the refereeing process. Sometimes re referees are very good, sometimes referees are very slow. And it may take a lot of emails to persuade referees to reply. So uh, when the results of the referees uh, come back and they're contradictory, one says, yes, it's okay. The other one says, no, there are problems with it. Then the, the, uh, the editor has two choices. One, if the editor feels that there's something there, the editor will send it to another person to referee it. 
but usually what happens because of pressure of manuscripts to select only the best for publication then if one referee says yes another says thumbs down then it gets rejected Uh, there will be a review form to fill in. That's the one for Journal of Experimental Botany, uh, as well as the actual report that you have to write as well. This, is, this was in the days of a paper version. It's now all on the journal's website. And note that it says quality of science inside the red box. You need to get at least four or five for the quality of the science for the manuscript to be accepted. Uh, they also have the importance of the topic. And that, that journal, at least a few years ago, it was rejecting 60% of the manuscripts that were submitted. So the majority were being rejected. Uh, I've just, I'll leave you to look at that in the, in the handout. I've got some examples of reviewers' comments, well, me as reviewer. These are comments which I've written on manuscripts over the years. So that's in your handout. And uh, that's now the conclusion of this part of the course. If you have carried out good quality research, then the advice that I've been giving you this morning it should allow you to write a scientific manuscript for publishing in an M21 journal. So hopefully you'll be able to improve your success rate in the future. The main point that I want you to be aware of is uh, that your research has got to be looking for the truth of what's going on. And therefore your manuscript has got to make it clear to the reader that you have identified the truth from what you did by presenting it in a clear way that makes it easy for the reader to understand. <coughs> so if your marketing strategy was effective, you should now be able to get your manuscript accepted for publication. So it's now exactly 12 o'clock, but I'm going to have some questions. <laughs> Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Um, usually it does. Yes. Now, I, I know that a number of journals do say that you can suggest reviewers. I know... I can give you a personal example, unfortunately. Um, and what the journal will usually do is... So, it means that you can identify somebody that you think, and it's usually somebody who you think is going to be sympathetic. Um, you are free to suggest two or three names of people that you think would be appropriate to review your manuscript. What will happen is the one of those names will probably probably be invited to be a reviewer, and the the journal will identify somebody else, others, to be the independent reviewers. And as I say, most journals will usually try to get two reviews back, sometimes three. So there would be one from your your suggested reviewer and one from an independent source. Or it could be two independent and one from your suggested source. Uh, I can give you a personal example. Uh, a, one day last year, I was sent an email request from a journal to review a manuscript. And the journal didn't give me the name, the author's name. So all I saw was the general subject area. And at that time, because I was busy doing something else, and I knew that I would be late sending in my report, I said that I was rather busy and I wouldn't be able to send a report in uh, within about a month. And the journal then said, oh, well, thank you, we'll ask somebody else. And that's the last I heard about it. 
And then uh, some weeks later, I spoke to one of my colleagues here in Serbia. And he said, ah, Steve, were you sent a manuscript on such and such? And I said, well, yes. Ah, but apparently you, 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 you refused to review it. He says, yes, well, how do you know? Ah, well, I was invited to suggest the names of reviewers, so I sent your name in. You see, so the journal definitely used that suggestion, sent it to me, and I never got to read it. But the second question, what do you think about the group? Well, if you've got the money. <laughs> um, yes. I know that I know that money here is always a problem. So I suppose I would go with those journals where you don't have to pay. If you have M21 journals in that category, then I suppose it limits your choice and makes it easier for you to decide which journals to to submit to. I cannot see any particular advantage to submitting your manuscript to a journal where you have to pay. Certainly, as far as the ministry is concerned, M21 is M21. So the ministry is not going to give you David Pointer because you've paid to uh, that journal to have it pu published. So... Okay. Okay, now then, uh, you, you tend to pay more for the open access journals. And this is because open access means that everybody has free, free access to your article. The journals have to make their money somehow, so somebody's got to pay. Which means that the scientists who do the research have to pay. So, this is where, unfortunately, there are a relatively high proportion of these open access journals, which are happy to take your money, and they're happy just to copy-paste, put it in their journal, and it goes to the whole wide world, free access for everybody, but maybe there were flaws in your science, the quality of what you wrote should have been improved, um, but the journal has your money. So you don't really get a lot of benefit from that. So I wouldn't go out of my way to pay money, especially because I don't have any either. So, anyway. I've never had to pay for any of my manuscripts to be published. Uh... <laughs> I may have had to get, yes, I think I had to pay once for, I had to, uh, my department paid it, um, because I was including colour, colour images. I had to pay extra for colour. That's the only time that I've had to pay. So, um, I'm going to move on now. I'll be happy to answer questions during the lunch break.